People deluded, I'm back again. Now, allegedly, Arsenal are in talks to sign Osserman. Where have we heard that before? Joshua Zerksky rumours won't go away. Neither will the rumours that have emerged over the last few days linking Arsenal as well as other clubs to Xavi Simmons. Allegedly, Manchester United have stolen a march where Zuba Mendy is concerned. As we know, 99.9% .9 of these rumours are BS. What's actually happening in the world of football and what's actually being reported, you know, doesn't always correlate. But it makes for great talking points as the transfer window has officially opened. And at the time of making this video, it's a Monday. So Tuesday, apparently, the Premier League fixed just for this upcoming season will be announced people and obviously on the backdrop of that we've got the euros make sure you're joining me for the watch alongs for the euro so football never stops if you give me a second i'll share my screen and we'll get into everything that concerns arsenal now again i'm very pessimistic on not only rumors that link us with players in italy whether they're italian or italian base i know kirio and tommy as you could lay claim to why i should be more optimistic the awesome stuff he's been linked with us for a while arsenal need a striker we didn't actually bid for sesco but you know with sesco signing in a new deal the tabloids need a new man to write about one minute is sesco before that it was ivan tony and Ollie Watkins and it was awesome and Vlahovic and there'll be a next one probably by the time I finish this video now I don't know let me know how you lot feel do Arsenal actually need a striker because for me I say yes and no I think we need a striker you know I think we need a difference maker and I feel we need stronger squad depth but where difference makers are concerned if you can get another striker that takes us to another level on top of the form with Kai Havertz and all the other players around them if you find that game changing central midfielder and if you find a winger that could do that or complement our squad I think we're much stronger in our pursuit of sporting excellence or trophies now Osman, my personal form is we're not going to get him i feel you know napoli again it's the window is just opened and everyone's playing the game of poker but i think napoli's asking price or his release clause of 100 odd million it's not that arsenal don't want to pay it it's not that they don't value the play i just don't feel they find it value for money when you factor in the transfer fee probably his wages and probably his agent probably going to get a nice um percentage of commission really i just don't really believe it and it seems like chelsea have moved away from it arsenal are consistently linked it seems like the most plausible rumors if it's not paris Saint Germain, where they've kind of in Quash, it seems to be Saudi Arabia. But allegedly, Osman may get his wish to play in the Premier League with Arsenal ready to make an offer to Napoli, people. The 25-year-old has made no secret that he wants to leave Serie A this summer with England his preferred destination, despite heavy interest from the Saudi Pro League. The Gunners have emerged as front runners after Chelsea recently called their interest. According to Cal CL Napoli 24, the North London club are unwilling to meet the players' release clause, which Napoli values at 160 million euros, but would be willing to negotiate for a lower fee. Now, Napoli have been linked with Gabriel Jesus, Tommy Asu, and Emil Smith Rowe. Make of that what you will, people. Creative journalism or substance, or could you potentially offer them as squad players or make weights better yet in the deal? I would say no. I think we need to hold on to Gabriel Jesus for an, at least another season and the versatility that he provides. I'd rather sell Smith Rowe if he is to go outright, and Tommy Asu needs to stay. He's a value squad player the only thing with tommy is he can't really stay fit moving away from that there you have it if we're unwilling to meet his release clause that doesn't help us but if they're willing to negotiate lower then who knows you know but how much lower are they willing to say 90 or 80 then i think arsenal might listen and where napoli are concerned you know the season before last they won the scudetto the Serie A, the season has just gone they finished 10th obviously the manager's been sat they've brought in antonio conte so it seems like a transitional period people apparently conte wants to use the cash to generate um, generated, sorry, to strengthen Napoli ahead of this season. Arsenal are also understood to have ended their interest in Sesco after the Slovenian international decided to stay in the Bundesliga next term. Osman, meanwhile, has a lucrative offer from on the table from Saudi Arabia with a salary thought to be in the region of 40 million a season. Oof, ridiculous sums, really. So, yeah, if you believe anything, apparently Arsenal are apparently to bid in the next few days for Osman. Now, again, I'm not saying that's not going to happen, but it's fair to say these are probably why of the mark. Apparently, the Gunners had not been informed in advance of Ses by Sesko of his decision, and with the player rejecting some attempts from Saudi Arabia a few weeks ago, Arsenal clearly felt they are in pole position. New contacts between Arsenal and the player's agent were scheduled for the next few days, but Sesko's future, at least in the short term, has now been defined. Um, 
Okay, what does that have to do with Arsenal, really and truly? Again, so they're, they're saying the same things. Apparently, this, this journalist said, Arsenal will make a new attempt with Napoli in the next few days after many rumours. The Gunners wanted Sesko, who instead decided to stay at Leipzig. Arsenal now will try with the Nigerian who dreams of the Premier League, but not by paying the enormous amount of the raid of the clause, but a lower sum. Napoli will have to evaluate the pros and cons. I mean, 90 million, let's get it done, really. So, yeah, if rumours are to be believed, we're in trying to go for him in the next few days people but apparently he's got a release clause of 100 to 130 million euros we just saw 160 so it appears that it's unclear people really what's going on in that regards we know napoli are notoriously difficult businessmen and they did spend a lot of money you know buying Osman, which is very different from you know the players they've got from all the four corners or so well um corners of the world and obviously sold them at a profit so yeah if that's to be believed he dreams of playing in the premier league we've heard that before arsenal are interested we've heard that before and an offer could come in the next few days as far as we know despite the monster offer from saudi arabia victor Osman does not want to go to saudi arabia arsenal does not value him 120 million euros but just over half that 75 million euros so that's about 60 odd million quid which could be decent for the 25 year old really and truly uh kk has been linked with leaving napoli surely napoli don't let the georgian international and the nigerian international and awesome and leave in the next few windows i've actually got a video coming out with, about him so make sure your notification bells are on allegedly again i'm not too sure on the credibility of the report but man united are planning on making an opening bid of around 37 million for real sociedad midfielder martin zubamendi he has a release clause of 50 million now we've heard zubamendi is having second thoughts about leaving in Sociedad for whatever reason he's been linked consistently with Arsenal you know the figureheads at Sociedad have recently come out which we've covered and kind of distanced Zuba Mendy from departing but everybody's got a price and he has a 50 million release clause but a bit like Benjamin Sesco for clubs to activate that release clause they need to have an assurance that the player actually wants to make the move similar to what we saw many years ago boy, four years ago with Thomas Partey or so so I'm not too sure on that. Big up Man United, it is a massive club and, you know, Ten Hag signed a new deal, so they've got a bit of stability and they're making changes off the field. But if Zuba Mendy was to depart for the Premier League, you'd probably get better wages at Man United, but you'd get a competitive salary at Arsenal. Obviously, Mikel Arteta is not only Spanish, but he's from your sort of region in Spain. And you're seeing what he's doing with several players, in you know, in particular in midfield, how he's upgraded Martin Odegaard's game and what he so far done for Declarat. So surely it would make more sense to join us. Now, Joshua Zertsky, apparently he's going AC Milan. Some reports say that's wide of the mark. He's been linked with Juventus. And again, obviously due to the Sesco bid not happening, zertsky has been a player that's been linked with Arsenal. And those rumours won't go away. Arsenal have been told they'll have to pay Joshua Zertsky's agent a monstrous commission in order to hijack the Bologna striker from AC Milan. Zertsky was reported by... you ununanimous sources earlier this week to be on the verge of completing a 40 million euro move from Bologna to Milan. Allegedly, Milan have agreed personal terms and have agreed to pay the release clause. However, it's being held up by the commission demanded by Kaya Jurukin. Apparently, he's demanding a barely available 15 million euros in order to compete complete apologies Zerksky's transfer to Milan out of principle Milan are refusing to pay such a high amount and have been trying to get the price down so far they've been unsuccessful which has given Arsenal the time to re-enter the race for the striker known as the Dutch Latin Sky Sports UK apparently saying that Arsenal are trying to convince Zerksky to join Arsenal instead having missed out on uh, on Sesco people we'd all love Isaac at the carpet he'd be my number one target but that can't happen really and it seems like Ivan Tony rumors are dead in the water so whether Arsenal are willing to pay the money for the the 23 year old six foot four dutch striker is another thing he did get seven assists and 12 goals in bologna lot for bologna last season as they actually qualified for the champions league but they've left their managers cut who knows? When I think of him, I've said it before, I think of playmaking and I think he fits the bill of a modern day striker. Whether he's got the capacity to score goals, I believe with a platform and Mikel Arteta, he could, but he doesn't have that strong catalogue. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts. I have covered this previously, but allegedly Arsenal and Manchester United have both reportedly expressed an interest in Xavi Simmons, who didn't have the best of games for Holland in their recent game in the Euros, or in fact, their first game in the Euros. I wouldn't want him on loan. Now, on ability, yeah, I would, but we're essentially developing a playoff for 
for no reason. He's going to go back over to PSG. Who knows? Odegaard initially joined on loan. We was able to get him permanently. I just think PSG are going to price him out of a move. Obviously, he's competing at the Euros, so his future is not going to be solved anytime soon. Big up Arsenal ladies. Apparently, we're interested in signing England midfielder from Barcelona. Apparently, we're interested in signing Kiera Walsh from Barca. So, yeah, nice to see on all fronts we're trying to upgrade. Uh, apparently, we've set an asking price of 10 million for Kieran Tini, which is far too below what we should be getting, especially if he goes to a Premier League club, regardless of what he's been, what his landscape has been in the last two or so seasons. So we'll make of that what you will. Again, Ben Jacobs has basically said Arsenal are looking at a, a wide man. We're looking for a young left back who could also provide potentially versatility at centre half. So it's, you know, all the journalists are saying the same things. We want a striker, a central midfielder, a winger. We're still linked with the Nico Williams, the Zertskis, the Javi Simmers, the Ossimans, the same names that have been there, people. And Allegedly, Arsenal, Arsenal will prioritise bringing academy gems through into the first team setup this summer rather than making big money signings. Why not both? And where you look at our academy, we've got some talented players, but who is really ready? Probably just Ethan. And again, you're going to have to give young Ethan time to get to grips with the intensity of, of the Premier League, the fast pacedness and things. He's the only one you could argue is ready right now. Waters maybe could have been in the look, it could have got a look in. You could argue Koza Jubri could have got a look in, but the only one I would throw my hat on and say definitely at this moment in time would be Ethan. But we do have to do better at not only bringing players through to our first team, but if they can't make it here, kind of following on what we've seen with Balogun, selling them for a decent fee. And I think that's where we could learn from Manchester City and Chelsea in that, in too many ways, our academy could be self sufficient. We're letting a lot of money go out the door, in my humble opinion. Speaking of strikers, we're still linked with the Girona Ukrainian forward people, Artem Dovguk, who I can't pronounce his name. The 26-year-old has been linked with Arsenal, Chelsea, Atletico Madrid, and as many other teams. Now, I've done a video on him, so go and check that out, people. Florian Wirtz's dad has spoken. Apparently, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, City, and Arsenal are all looking at him. Every club in Europe would love Wirtz. You know, he done well at Leipzig. You know, he got mad. In, he started well at Leipzig a couple of years ago, got a crazy injury, and he's back to business for club and country. And you saw against Scotland, his dad has said Florian has a contract with Leverkusen. He's looking forward to next season there when he can play in the Champions League with Leverkusen for the first time. It is fact now is the focus on the European Championships. After that, there's a lot to do with the club for the upcoming season. So there's no reason to speculate. There's really nothing to say. And he's contracted until 2027. You'd imagine he ends up at a Barca, Real Madrid um, or a Bayern Munich and you can't rule out clubs of that ilk. KK, you know, I can't pronounce his name, people. Apparently, you know, his agent has claimed the plan is to leave Napoli this season. Arsenal, Liverpool and Manchester City have all been linked. Now, considering he's got three years left on his contract and the, last eight, the next 18 months are crucial if they are to get a renewal could this be a play by his agent to get a better contract because you'd imagine in his position so a left winger or just let's just say winger in comparison and a lot of it is circumstantial but you look at all the wingers around the world could you argue he's underpaid especially if Osman leaves does he reckon you know if I'm the main man I want to get main man salary and you know individually and collectively for Napoli the last two years they've gone from winning the league to finishing temp so naturally there's been a fluctuation of form there's been periods where KK really didn't do anything to scream and shout about in Serie A but he still managed to get double figures for goals and assists uh, together so he's been a shining light of such people Spurs have been thrown into the ring and he's someone that's been since he's touched stepped foot at Napoli he's been linked with a move people his agent has said you know he's still under contract but more or less said he wants to play in the Champions League and I'm not too sure that will rub Conte up the right way people so we'll have to see Romano has spoken on it and said the father and the agent both of them in the same interview have just announced they plan to leave remember this part they both said they're willing to wait this they're still waiting to talk to the player but both say we want to leave Napoli so is does the player necessarily want to leave who knows the plan is to leave Napoli, the decision we made after the Euros, but we want to leave Napoli. Both of them mentioned the intention of playing in the Champions League next season. Maybe staying at Napoli one more season would mean losing one season of Champions League football. We're at 23, you've got plenty of years. So we'll have to see in regards to that exactly what's happening. People, let me know your thoughts on everything we've discussed. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Stay safe, stay blessed. Peace. <laughs>